Welcome to the new. Every experience with God's Word promises to be refreshing and transformational. Receive today's message with high expectations as it brings power, light, and a fresh anointing to your life. Good morning. I trust you had a wonderful weekend and I'm sure you are excited to start out the amazing week ahead of us. Welcome to Audacity with PS. Before I proceed, I'd love to acknowledge and appreciate my pastor, our apostle, for this opportunity to be here today and to do this with the new family. Um, before I get right into the talk for today, PS, you know, started out last week talking to us about boldness being as bold as a lion and also taking baby steps towards our goals. Um, right about now, I want to encourage you to share the link across the social media platforms, share on your status, share with family and friends and ensure that everybody's plugged right in for the goodness that we have in store um, today. Okay. So today we will be talking about managing relationships in career and in business. You know, God has a purpose for every one of us, but guess what? Our purpose cannot be fulfilled in isolation. Nobody's purpose was designed to run solo. We need people, we need relationships. Um, we need to understand collaboration. We need to understand communication, soft skills, emotional intelligence, how to manage um, the people God brings to us, how to connect with people with our uniqueness, how to have um, deep and productive connections with other people. And this is a very critical skill to master. I mean, imagine um, for somebody in a corporate setting that just at the beginning of their career, they were not armed with certain skills or they didn't have certain understanding and they had to suffer for, you know, their lack of knowledge and their ignorance that is as they grow through the ranks, you know, as they fail and learn from experience that they start to learn it. But it doesn't have to be that way because the wisdom, the resources are available for us. And as we apply ourselves, we get better. We get an edge, you know, um, just by reason of having knowledge on, on, on certain things and not necessarily failing and then learning from experience. The anchor scripture um, is going to be from Proverbs 11 verse 4, verse 14, pardon me. Where there is no counsel, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So it's very critical to understand that all the wisdom that we need to excel Everything we need for life and godliness has been provided for us, right? Every problem you would realize that you just need the wisdom for it. So I will get right into it. How do we maximize relationships? Um, I'm going to share um, something called the Pi formula. The Pi formula, and this is a formula that applies not just to career professionals, but for also business owners, entrepreneurs, right? The PI formula is an acronym, P-I-E. The P stands for performance, the I stands for image, and E stands for exposure. I learned this early on in my career and it was of tremendous help to me. The first is performance. So what does performance mean? Um, this talks about your skills. It talks about your competence. It talks about your strength. It talks about your expertise. Basically, in plain terms, it talks about your capacity and ability to do good work. Performance. And if you realize these three elements I just mentioned, performance, image, and exposure, these are things that are within our control how people do certain things or how they interact with us are elements that are not within our control but our performance within our control our image within our control our exposure within our, our control so i'm going to dive right into it um, in further details so performance like i said it talks about your skills talks about what you can do can you get the job done can you do it better than the next person next to you you know 
Um, and then the second is image. This talks about how people perceive you. What's your outlook? What's your physical outlook, right? Um, how do, how do people, uh, um, interact with you based on the energy you put out there based on how you put your foot forward when people meet you for the first time if they were to describe you in one word what's the word you know um, they are going to use to describe you so basically image is how you um, represent yourself is how you allow yourself um, is how you shape the way people view you or look at you um, and then the third is on exposure Basically, um, this speaks to the fact that do you know the things, the people and places that matter and do the people that matter know you? That's exposure. So exposure means playing outside your, uh, the field of your comfort zone, ensuring that you are not just surrounded with the familiar, but the unfamiliar is also um, has some level of interaction with you. So that's what exposure is about. Exposure not only um, falls within uh, maybe traveling or reading books, but also ensure that the people that matter outside of your immediate scope have some sort of interaction with you. So the question of the day is how do we elevate our pie? The first on um, uh, performance, which means, you know, um, how we get things done, our expertise. You need to improve your performance um, and how you do that, apart from learning on the job, apart from seeking formal and informal learning, apart from seeking um, um, mentorship and, 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 and all of that, it's also genuinely applying yourself um, in a generation where everybody's about the optics, everybody wants to be visible, not a lot of people put their attention to actually knowing how to get the job done, you know, uh, because you don't want to have a platform where the whole world can see your weaknesses or your laps or can see um, the things you should have worked on in the secret, right? So first of all, you need to work on your performance. Ensure you can actually get the job done. Ensure you are investing in yourself. Very critical. You are your number one and priority investment. So it's very important that you are pouring into yourself. You are ensuring that you're owning your skills. You're actually getting the job done because if you don't apply yourself and um, you have some ideas on how to get the job done, trust me, the person who is actually applying themselves is going to do a better job, you know, than you. So the second on um, elevating um, your uh, image, you can do this by improving your physical outlook, how you dress, the way you speak, the way you communicate, the way you interact with people. Because I realized that um, in corporate settings, people feel that um, management, you know, um, leaders eye up there when they want to make critical decisions about employees, you know, they do all of the data analytics. And yes, there's that element, you know, where you look at people's results, the things they've done, their growth curve. But trust me, a lot of the time, it is purely subjective. It is purely subjective because it is driven by people's perception of you. And that's why you see that a lot of the time, um, people that you know you are actually better than in terms of skill tend to get ahead. Why? Because they've mastered the art of elevating their image. The way you speak, can you hold an articulate conversation with top management? Can you hold an articulate conversation with your manager, with your uh, one-up manager? These are the things that prove to people that you are a high potential individual. So you need to elevate your outlook. If you have an opportunity to um, be in a meeting um, or to be in a conference, you need to dress the part. People will be thinking, does this person look like um, they are ready for the next level? Does this person look like they are fit to come into um, a higher spec? Can I trust this person to be invited into this meeting and they are going to come dressed properly? These are things that people might not be explicitly taught or, you know, people, uh, uh, um, I mean, people may not be told in black and white, but you just realize that certain people are getting ahead, but you are not. 
it's also very critical to understand how to communicate and i'm going to give a personal example i remember just you know fresh out of um, university i was an intern at the time and um a senior senior colleague had actually walked up to me i was like oh hey you're one of the new interns and i'm like oh yes you know introduce myself my name is Tokwe, and um i gave um this this colleague a an, a, a handshake and he was like wow you shake like a ceo that marked something in that person's mind and it also marked something in my mind because i wasn't trying to shake like a ceo i was just shaking confidently but this thing just marks people's perception of you it means that when you are in a room you had there's a meeting and people are asked to share their thoughts have something to say because that might be the only interaction people will have of you that will mark something in your mind and ensure that they recommend you for opportunities you have no clue about and this has worked for me and i know this is something that keeps working for people who apply it so we need to put in the work to elevate our image the way people perceive us trust me nobody is up Everybody is not walking around with a shovel trying to dig for who you truly are on the inside. If you don't show people who you are on the inside, they will not get to interact with, interact with the awesomeness that you are. So the third is on exposure. Exposure, like I said, talks about if the people that matter actually know us. Um, it means seeking the right mentors, um, maintaining connections, ensuring that you leave a mark wherever you go. And one thing I like to tell people is that ensure you seek mentors and sponsors in the space you play. Um, as believers um, or people in very strong communities, I see that people limit their connections to those in those communities. I mean, if you're a career professional, your connections cannot be limited to people in the church setting, in your tribes, you know, or whatever the case may be. Because guess what? They may give you all the wisdom you need. Truly, they, they may actually have all you need in terms of wisdom. But guess what? When they are discussing who they are going to promote, I can assure you your pastor is not going to be in that room. I can assure you that career mentor you have in your immediate community is not going to be in that room. It's going to be somebody in the organization. So it matters a lot that you maintain connection with those who matter and as stakeholders in the space you play. So it means that um, as a business owner, um, you are not just interacting with your peers in terms of those doing um, maybe similar business as you or at the same scale as you. You have to look for how to establish connection with those that um, control the industry, with industry stakeholders. Because when decisions are going to be made, trust me, these are the people that are going to be in that room. Uh, I also have a personal example about, um, I mean, I have a mentor that um, in my organization, even though the person is not currently, you know, in, in the country where I work, but I remember that I was supposed to go for a training. I really wanted to go for a training. It was in my scope of work, you know, and my immediate manager said, oh, I couldn't go, you know, for some reasons. And I just, you know, moved on from it. It's only for this mentor of mine in, I mean, in another continent. I mean, this mentor, I just got an email and I saw that he had started to have conversations on my behalf because he realized, oh, Tucker should be a part of, you know, um, this training and just because of that, I got the approval to travel outside of the country for um, that training. Did, it wasn't because my manager did not want me to go, right? But maybe there were just some things high up that he wasn't aware of because he wasn't in, you know, um, the, uh, it wasn't in uh, uh, the country where I am at, at, at the moment. But because I had a stakeholder, I had somebody who, um, who had visibility into what was happening, it worked for my benefit. So we need to ensure that we spread our tentacles of exposure so that we are top of mind to the people that matter and we can be recommended for um, opportunities. So before I move on from this, um, one of the questions that people get to ask a lot in corporate settings is how do I manage my manager? Um, and sometimes this seems quite daunting and tasking um, because I mean, this is my boss, but really what's the work of your manager? Your manager is taxed with ensuring that you are rightly deployed as an employee, that um, uh, you are um, 
you are being enabled with the right environment and support to grow and they are also supposed to remove barriers for you to win and fly you know sometimes it can seem challenging you know to um, be a major player or to influence things in that dynamics because you feel like this is my boss this is me but not necessarily and somehow because of our um cultural setting you know there's that there's that um funny subordinate dynamics um, that happens between uh, managers and, and, and um, the, the, the subordinate or um, the people they lead, right? But it doesn't need to be the case. Managing your manager, I know we must have heard that um, statement a lot, but basically what it means is that having the ability to influence the dynamics between that relationship, you don't have to um, um, just go with the tide. You can you actually have a say in that dynamics and you can influence things so when i talk about this i'm basically saying you can influence that dynamics and you can influence how um, the rapport with you and your manager would eventually board to be right so what are the things you can do um, to effectively manage your manager which is to influence that dynamics um, i mean for example for some people their manager can call them up and say, you know what, I want you to work on one, two, three, and I need you to turn it in um, by close of business today. But you know that this is unrealistic. Well, because you feel like you can't influence that dynamics, you go ahead to say, okay, I will get it done. But you know that realistically it cannot be done, or at least it can't be done excellently in that timing, right? So one of these you can do is to first understand the priorities of your leader or of your manager when you understand your boss's priorities you can um, determine what's important and what's not in that moment or what's urgent and what's not you also need to learn communication and conflict management skills which means that you communicate clearly you learn how to summarize sometimes um, some people have issues they want to communicate and they spend 10 minutes trying to communicate you know something that they could have summarized you know in lesser time so communication and conflict uh, management which means um, communicating clearly learning how to summarize and asking for feedback um, for some people you have an issue to discuss and you spend 10 minutes discussing something that you could have summarized in one minute. Um, I've had a manager that when you start to talk for long, you literally see the person visibly lose interest and get distracted. So it means that I had to learn how to summarize my key points. They are just because as you go higher um, um, in your industry, your career, you realize that it's very necessary to Find, uh, uh, fine tune the art of talking top level, right? So it means that for some of you, you have to learn how to write one pages. So it means if I ask you the state of your business, the state of your team, the state of your, uh, your scope of work, you have to learn how to summarize everything concisely that for instance if it's given to your ceo they don't get bored and they are yawning just because they're trying to understand what you're working on so that's one of the ways that you can even elevate your image because people feel like this person is ready for the next level they are thinking the way um, um leaders are thinking they are thinking top level they are thinking big points you know because you don't have to saddle as people go up they don't really want to be saddled with these small operational things they want to think top level they want to think um what are we doing in the next one year in the next five years so it's very important that you develop clear communication skills you learn how to talk big points summarize you learn how to ask for feedback um, sometimes you get into review meetings and that's the first time that you are hearing that your manager is not pleased about something you are doing or has um, um, feedback for you for you rather uh, for you um, when you could have just maybe taken the step to initiate um, by monthly reviews or monthly one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, you know, where you just ask your manager to give you honest feedback, ask you, uh, uh, pardon me, tell you things, you know, you need to stop doing things, you need to start doing things, you need to continue doing and how you can improve, you know, so that at the end of the day, um, half year or at the end of, of the fiscal year or calendar year, you are not surprised when your manager is giving you um, feedback, right? So that's um, one of the ways that you can actively influence that dynamics and manage your manager. Um, also manage expectations, which means that be clear on what your manager wants and what you can deliver. So when expectations are not managed, your manager has 
expectations this high and then you deliver this way there's going to be conflict but at the moment your manager is setting the bar this way but you know in this timing with the resources what i can deliver and everybody's clear then um, um it's going to minimize whatever itches may have otherwise um come up right and then the last is being pro proactive which means um you know what to do but instead of um, doing the barest minimum, going above and beyond, right? Some of the blind spots of your manager, because you're thinking more top level, it's easy for your eyes to catch it. Be a value, um, uh, be someone who delivers value, be a solution provider, right? Um, so this is one of the, these are one of the ways rather that you can effectively manage your manager. Remember, managing your manager means that you are an active collaborator and you are actively influencing the dynamics of the relationship between you and your leader, your boss, or your manager. So do not forget the pie factor, performance, image, and exposure. For some of you, you have to go take a course to improve your performance. You are very clear that there is a capability gap, so you need to fi fix that. For some of you, maybe you need to have a wardrobe overhaul. You are not looking the part and you know you are not looking the part. Or when you get to rooms, um, you have inferiority complex. Because trust me, when you dress confident, you will feel confident, right? People want to speak to you. People feel like you have something to say. You have something to offer, right? And even if you don't know everything there is to know, but trust me, there's the likelihood that you'll be invited into the space where people are saying things you need to hear. And then exposure. For some of you, you need to find a strategic mentor um, in your organization, somebody who you feel you can learn from and has something, a skill you are trying to actively develop. So look out for that, explore that, you know, and invest in it. To round off this session, um, I have an exercise for you. I want you to find two or three trusted colleagues. Please do not look for family members or friends who don't interact to, uh, with you in um, the work setting and have no clue how um, you work or have no clue about um, the, the work dynamics, right? Look for trusted colleagues who see you in your work element, right? And ask them to um, rate you on a scale of one to three on your pie factor. Um, one being the lowest, three being the highest, and two, of course, average. So ask that colleague, um, two or three of them, Ask them to rank you on your performance. So it means that in the pool or within the pool of those who do the same thing as you do, how would they rank your performance? How would they rank your, your skill and your expertise, right? On a scale of one to three, same thing for image, right? Ask them to rank your image, how people generally perceive you, um, if it's the same way that you perceive yourself. So ask them to rank that as well. And of course your exposure. Ask them, ask them that um, um, in the pool of those that matter, key stakeholders, you know, the managing director, CEO, um, do I have um, that level of connectedness to them? Um, am I top of mind to these people? Then ask them to rank you. And of course, do an average of that. Um, if it's on a three, then keep doing what you do um, and take it up a notch higher. Um, because of course you want to progress from where you are to where you know you truly need to be and if it's less than that you can highlight where the gaps are if it's on the performance you know what to do image and exposure you know what to do to fix it and of course every three months you can check in with that colleague of yours to ask if anything has improved if anything has changed this is how we hold ourselves accountable and we track our process our progress rather so the pie factor is game for every industry, um, not just for career professionals, but even for business owners. So you want to find uh, maybe a, a trusted employee or even want to find um, a trusted um, uh, customer to rank you, you know, uh, on, on, on the pie factor. So that's about it um, for today's episode of Audacity with P.S. talking about managing relationships in career and in business as well. So before we close for this morning, I would like us to take the creed in an energetic manner to get our day fired up. 
as sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new and I love this church. God bless you and have a winning week. Bye for now. We hope you were greatly blessed by today's message because God still has so much he wants to share with you. So stay connected every week to experience uplifting and life-changing moments in his presence.